okay as uh, you will know we are still in uh, requirement number two a very very long set of uh, requirements so we have now the net income from the separate uh, operations of the company and the S company uh, we have the non-controlling interest the net income and the amortization of allocated excess you still refer to the table above and we have the goodwill impairment impairment under the full goodwill approach so the controlling interest in consolidated net income or profit attributable to equity holders or parent then we add the non-controlling interest in net income uh, we have the consolidated net income for 20x5 then we have the uh, non-controlling interest uh, in consolidated net income non-controlling interest uh, net income of s of uh, 90,000 then we deduct the amortization of allocated excess goodwill impairment for 20x5 referred to the amortization table above 80,400 uh, and uh, we have to multiply this by the non-controlling interest 16,560 so take note we are now trying to uh, determine uh, consolidated net income a uh, controlling uh, consolidated net income non-controlling interest 16,560 now for the consolidated net income of uh, controlling interest in consolidated net income or profit attributable to equity holders of parent how we add the non-controlling interest in net income so we have now the consolidated net income for 20x5 on subsequent to date of acquisition the consolidated retained earnings would be computed as follows so we have now the retained earnings of p company january 1 20x5 adjustment to convert from cost model to equity method for purposes of consolidation or to establish reciprocity p share and adjusted net income increased in subsidiaries retained earnings so retained earnings subsidiary january 1 20x5 how uh, we have the uh, january 1 20x4 uh, given the book then we have the amortization of allocated excess in the table and multiplied by the controlling interest so we have now 8,640 and deduct the goodwill impairment loss at full goodwill so we have now the consolidated retained earnings of 490,000 440 then uh, we have 258 to uh, 40 to be added we now get the total deduct the dividends paid then the goodwill recognized on consolidation purely relates to the parent share nci is measured as a proportion of identifiable assets and goodwill attributable to NCI share is not recognized. The NCI on December 31, 20S5 are computed as follows. So we have now the non-controlling interest, the common stock, uh, the retained earnings, then uh, S company uh, net income for 20X5 and deduct dividends paid. Then the adjustments to reflect fair value and the amortization of the allocated excess 20x4 and 20x5. Finally, we have 99,120 and we have 2,250. The non controlling interest on full goodwill net of impairment loss, we have now 3,000 minus 750 or 
2,250. So that's your uh, consolidated stockholders uh, equity. Uh, we have now the amount of 1,378,050. So, for uh, requirement number three, prepare journal entry to record investment in the books of the acquirer company. So, journal entry to record investment in the books of the acquirer company, uh, 20x4, under the 80% partial goodwill cost model, uh, 20x4, first year. We now debit to investment in S company for the given amount credit to cash. January 1, 20x4 uh, up to December 31, 20x4. We now debit to cash credit dividend income as uh, received by the parent from the subsidiary. On the books of S company, the 36,000. Dividends paid was recorded as debit to uh, dividends paid and credit to cash. Dividends paid by S company. Then in number four, prepare the uh, schedule for determination and allocated excess. Uh, schedule of determination and allocated uh, excess under the partial goodwill approach. Uh, we have now the consideration transferred of 372,000. Then we deduct the book value of uh, stockholders' equity of S. Uh, common stock, 240,000. And retained earnings, 120,000. And you multiply by 80%. So we get 288,000. Uh, the allocated excess of 84,000. Then we have the uh, adjustments for inventory, land, uh, equipment, buildings, and bonds payable up to 80%. So we now get 72,000. Thus, a positive excess of 12,000. Now the over, the undervaluation of assets and uh, Liabilities at full amounts are uh, showing uh, 90,000. So 80% of that is actually 72,000. The buildings and equipment will be further analyzed for consolidation. So we have now the book values and the fair values with decreases. So the net book value of uh, Net decrease of 24,000. A summary of depreciation and amortization adjustments uh, given. Account adjustment to be amortized. Inventory uh, 6,000. And subject to annual amortization equipment net uh, buildings and bonds payable for uh, year 20x4, 13,200, and 20x5, 4, 7,200. The goodwill impairment loss of 3,750 based on 100% fair value would be allocated to the controlling interest and the NCI based on the percentage of total goodwill each equity interest for purposes of allocating the goodwill impairment loss, the full goodwill is computed as consideration transferred. Then we have the fair value of the non-controlling interest given. We have now the fair value of subsidiary. Then we deduct the book value of stockholders uh, equity of 360000 then we have the allocated uh, excess for excess cost over book value. Then we have the over or undervaluation of assets and liabilities for 90000 We have now the uh, positive excess for goodwill at uh, for 15000
Uh, now, may excuse me, ma'am. Ma Time na, ma'am. Paper. Uh, work paper 20x4 year of acquisition under partial goodwill. So, we have now the entries that I have uh, uh, already uh, indicated. No, we have already indicated how uh, we now debit to common stock, we debit to retained earnings, credit to investment in uh, S company credit to non-controlling interest uh, then we have now to debit inventory accumulated depreciation for equipment and for buildings and land and discount on bonds payable debit to goodwill for uh, 12,000 uh, and credit to buildings non-controlling interest for uh, 90,000 times 20%. Then credit to investment again. Uh, 372,000 minus 288,000. So we have the difference of 84,000. Then we now have debit to cost goods sold depreciation, accumulated depreciation building. Uh, interest expense and goodwill impairment loss for 3,000 credit to inventory accumulated depreciation equipment discount on bonds payable and credit back to uh, goodwill now these are the figures that uh, are needed in the preparation of the adjustment and elimination entries so we have now the goodwill to parent the amount applicable to the NPI uh, for 20 percent therefore the goodwill impairment loss of 3750 based on 100 percent fair value or full goodwill would be allocated as follows So we have now this uh, entries. Then finally the worksheet for uh, 20x4. Now here you can find in 20x4 the net income of the subsidiary and uh, the related uh, balance sheet. Now, for uh, which amounts are forwarded to the uh, worksheet in uh, requirement number two. So, we have now the partial goodwill under the cost model, uh, second year. So, in number three requirement, the journal entry, uh, we now debit single entry is recorded by the P in 20x5 in relation to its subsidiary investment. So we debit to cash and credit to dividend income for 38400 On the books of S company, the 48000 dividends paid was recorded as follows. So we now debit to dividends paid and credit to cash. Second year after acquisition, we have P and S company for the net income. S company had 90,000 while P company had uh, 230,400 after receiving dividend income from P company. So dividends paid are likewise given. Next, schedule of determination and allocation of excess under partial goodwill. Then we have the consolidation work paper for 20x5. Then we have the journal entries. Investment in S company. We now uh, debit and credit to retained earnings of P company. To provide entry to convert from the cost method to the equity method, 
or the entry to establish reciprocity at the beginning of the year. And uh, we have retained earnings uh, and, uh, and we have beginning. So there's an increase of 24,000. We multiply by 80% controlling interest. Uh, we have now 19,200 as the retroactive adjustment. Then we have the common stock and retained earnings of 144,000. Credit to investment in uh, S company and non-controlling interest of 76,800. Then uh, again with the Beto, uh, we already had this in uh, uh, the previous uh, options. Uh, the previous requirements, you already have this. Then retained earnings here for impairment loss on partial goodwill, non-controlling interest. And uh, we debit accumulated depreciation of building, depreciation expense, and debit to interest expense. Credit to inventory, credit accumulated depreciation on equipment, discount on bonds payable and goodwill. Now these figures were already uh, shown in the previous tables. Debit to dividend income and uh, non-controlling interest, credit to dividends paid by subsidiary to eliminate intercompany dividends. E6, non-controlling interest, net income, and uh, non-controlling interest of 16,560. Net income of subsidiary and amortization in the table above. So we have 80 to 800 multiplied by 20%. We have the non-controlling interest. And finally, we have the worksheet. Just like the worksheet for 20x4. So you are now writing the adjustments and eliminations in the third and fourth columns following the numberings of the entries in number 5. Make sure that for every debit, you have a corresponding credit, meaning you have the uh, pairs for your journal entry and we have now the uh, balance sheet uh, figures and the non-controlling uh, interest so that gives us the total amount for requirement number 6 then uh, here we have uh, requirement number 3 uh, for uh, 20x4 first year debit to investment credit cash then at the end of the year debit cash credit dividend income debit cash credit dividends paid and we have the schedule of determination and allocation of excess so we have now the fair value of subsidiary of 465000 This is under the full goodwill approach. Then we deduct the book value of stockholders equity of 300. Uh, yes, Miss Villanueva, any question? Ma'am, time na ma'am. Ay, nagambal ako nga paglabot sang screen, ha? Huh? Okay, so we have now uh, share screen ko lang ang requirement number 4. Requirement number 4, schedule of determination and allocation of uh, excess under the full goodwill showing the full goodwill of 15,000. Then we have the same table as above. Here we have the positive excess. Then, the consolidation uh, work paper. Again, we have the journal entries. Okay, I hope you can uh, get the journal uh, entries here. 
and uh, we involve the same amounts as uh, above. So we have now the worksheet for consolidated financial uh, statements. Okay, take note of the contents. Now we have uh, differences due to the assumptions. At this time, we are using uh, the, the subsidiary 80% owned first year after acquisition. Okay, I have already uh, shared screen. Here we have the full goodwill second year. And uh, we have now the books of S Company. Uh, here, number five for the journal entries. And uh, the journal entries now from E1 up to E6. And uh, finally, you have requirement uh, number six for the worksheet which uh, requires the uh, consolidated figures. I hope you will study this uh, very, very long uh, solutions. Okay, by tomorrow, we are going to involve problem two. Okay. 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 Okay.